Hello, everybody. As I mentioned, I, my name is Mary Chris Bonso. I am currently a developer advocate at Magic. And at Magic, I do a bunch of things, a few of them being I create blogs and tutorials. I also connect with devs at the meetups that I host. And I consider myself a multi-passionate creative. I am currently building a community in public called Blockchain Ladies Club. And I also have um, a personal brand identity I'm building up across um, a variety of social medias like Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube, and a little bit on TikTok. <laughs> and fun facts about me, I have two dogs and one cat and about 30 indoor plants. So actually, I'm estimating 30 because I need to count it again. Um, a few of my plants died, but it's okay. So oh, these are my pets. This is Kona, Reggie, and Pito. All right, so let's move forward. Before I talk about TDD, I wanted to share a fun little journey with y'all about how I switched from writing my backend from Node to Go. So let's do this. Um, so I first started learning, or I first started programming in late 2016. And my favorite, my first favorite tech stack was this. Um, I wrote, I used JavaScript in the front end, React as my um, UI framework, and Redux as my uh, local state manager. And in the back end, um, I was using Node.js uh, mostly. So yeah, this is this is my first tech stack. And I learned Go back, I mean, not back, but a couple of years later after um, this time, I learned uh, about Go when I was a working for a startup. And I learned about Go because it was the primary language that my team was using. So I, I needed to learn it to be able to contribute to the code base. But on top of that, um, our main customers were DevOps engineers. So I was learning a lot about um, our customers and their favorite tools, which was at the time, I mean, it probably still is, uh, cloud-oriented container projects like Docker and Kubernetes. And for those of you who don't know, oh, actually it's a, it's a whole definition that we're gonna go down on. So I'm just gonna leave it later for if anyone has questions. But if you didn't know, these super popular um, open source projects were written in Go for a lot of good reasons, which I can touch on later if somebody asks. So ever since then, I've always opted for Go when I was writing my backend. And it wasn't necessarily because I needed Go's top-notch features like garbage collection, concurrency, or ability to scale distributed systems. And that's because I'm a developer advocate. So I, I mostly just write side projects that are generally small. Um, but the reason why I opted for Go was because those reasons, which they're good, but it's because I really love how Go forces me to be a more mindful programmer because it's statically typed and it has a super strict compiler as we all know. So I had to be more mindful of what goes into my program. And I also feel like I'm more efficient because Go has a lot of tools and a good to standard library. And I feel like all I need to worry about, um, and I'm sure this is common across anyone who starts programming in Go, um, I feel like all I need to worry about when coding in Go is implementing solutions rather than choosing how things are done, unlike with Node.js uh, and its countless um, NPM modules that you can choose from. So this is uh, this was my tech stack. Um, this is what uh, my tech stack started looking like in 2019. And if you're curious, uh, now if I needed to build something from scratch, I would still keep using Go. I mean, I still do. <laughs> so these, this is my favorite tech stack right now, if I was building something from scratch, okay? All right, and I also love building the TDD way. And this is why I'm gonna, most of my talk is gonna be about this, um, creating your projects with TDD in mind. 
So I hope all of you are ready. All right, so first off, what is TDD? Well, TDD stands for Test Driven Development, and it is a software engineering practice where you write your tests before writing the code that they're meant to test. And it's a, it was actually rediscovered by this uh, influential software engineer named Kent Beck. And he's actually a founder of another software engineering practice called Extreme Programming. Um, it's very popular. And he was one of the first to champion TDD across, I feel like across the um, networks. And he learned about TDD from an ancient, what he refers to as an ancient book about programming. And he said that once he tried it out, he became a full-on advocate and started talking about it with other programmers. And it turns out that the older programmers that he shared it with had already been using TDD. It just wasn't named TDD. So um, if you look it up, you'll find that TDD has, the, the whole uh, premise of TDD has been used ever since 950, 1957. So these are the old books, ancient books that he was referring to. And he's right, he, it does look pretty ancient. So, how did I discover TDD? Well, as you can see, I didn't choose TDD. TDD chose me. Um, TDD found me when I was taking on a programming course um, early on in the pandemic to keep my technical skills sharp. And then um, once I fell down the rabbit hole of TDD, I found that so many notable software engineers like Uncle Bob and Matias from Fun Fun Function and also countless of other people online champion for TDD. And so I, um, you know, I love what it brings to me as well, but knowing that it has a really good um, lineup of, of people who love it was really cool. It's like you're joining, joining this awesome community. So why did I love it? Um, well, before I go into that, so this person right here, his name is Uncle Bob. And he actually brought a lot of software uh, design principles to life and is the creator of the famous Agile Manifesto. And so um, TDD came to life. Um, I like the reason that Uncle Bob gave for it, which is the root problem TDD attempts to solve is developers just being afraid to refactor either their own code or somebody else's code. So when you do test-driven development, the implementation of your code just emerges from only what you need. So every variable, every input parameter, every condition um, that you add, you only add if, it ver if you um, verify that it is the test's intended behavior. So in other words, every single decision you make is tested. This is why um, you often hear people say that TDD gives you optimal test coverage. And as you can imagine, um, if every single decision you make is tested, that means doing TDD needs to happen um, in small incremental steps. So you're moving from one very tiny feature to another. So for this reason, TDD is great at forcing us to decompose bigger problems into smaller ones so this is why it's easy to refactor and maintain. And because we're more intentional with what we're adding to our code, we end up with simpler code with just no hidden surprises. So that's what I refer to as cleaner code. I mean, everybody refers to that as cleaner code. And when you have cleaner code with great documented tests, it's much easier for you and other developers to read it. So it's really easy to go back to your code, read it and refactor it. And so this means that everybody else can do the same and can you, all of you can go faster at developing. And I put a little joke here. Clearly, it's a, it's a good joke. Go faster. Excuse me. So these are most of the reasons. Um, this reason over here is my favorite. 
um, why I love TDD is because of its continuous immediate feedback that it gives us um, on whether or not our code works. I, as I mentioned before, um, seeing the compiler is kind of like having a buddy um, that's telling you, hey, this is uh, wrong, uh, do it this way. So it's just walking you through uh, building up your, your program, kind of like doing pair programming with a computer. So really cool. Okay, so now how do we do test-driven development? So there is this famous thing that um, everybody does with TDD, which is red, green, and then refactor. So red, as you'll see here, just means that you start with a failing test, a, a super simple failing test. That's all you write. And then, um, and then next is green. And what that means is you write just enough code implementation to satisfy that super simple test. So make that super simple test pass. And once you make it pass, then you refactor. So um, all this means is that you change your code to, um, to be what you want it to look or how you want it to perform or how you want it to read. So you only um, change it based on that and you need to make sure that um, you run the test again to make sure it still passes and you didn't change the code's behavior. And then you repeat uh, this next three, uh, these steps um, to on the next simplest uh, test and code that you want to um, run TDD on. So that is how you do TDD in a nutshell. And now let's see that in practice real quick. Okay, so um, this is TDD, I mean code without any TDD. So what I decided to do is add a little bit of TDD um, into one of my existing code uh, from a guide that I wrote on how to integrate uh, Magic Authentication SDK with a Go project. So, right, it's a, it's a lot of code that's hidden, but I'm just gonna focus on this. We're gonna keep it simple. So in this main program, as you can see, we have a tweets array and all we're doing is printing out the, these tweets. Okay. And let me exit. All right, so this is my program. It doesn't have TDD on it yet. And before we do TDD again, we just need, I wanted to show how you can test, set up testing and go. It's actually very easy. So this is what we're gonna do first. We're going to go to main.go and um, update our main.go. So um, previously we were printing out tweets directly, but now what we're gonna do is separate out um, that functionality of printing out the tweet here. So we have a print tweets that returns um, a manually passed in uh, um, array literal, and we are calling it here. And I'm just separating out, separating out the concerns to make it easier to test. So this is good. And we're calling that print tweets here. I think I mentioned that already. <laughs> okay. And next, next we're gonna write the test file. So to write a test file, um, it's common practice to have um, the uh, original file that you're testing, its name and underscore and test.go. And what we're importing is our two packages, testing and reflect. And so to write a test, um, function, we, you need to make sure that it starts with uh, capital T E S T. So test print tweets. And we're going to be passing in um, uh, the testing library that we're using because we're going to need that to um, print out the error. And once the um, compiler sees this um, format, it'll know to execute the test. So what we're writing here is a got and a want. So got is what the function is returning. So we're um, using the function that we defined in our main print tweets. And what we want 
to see is an array literal that has these exact same content. So here we're using reflect to make sure um, to make sure to compare these two um, arrays and make sure that each content, each of the values in the array um, is equal um, when compared, when comparing the two arrays. So that is it. And when you run go test, uh, it should pass. So this is not TDD. We were writing the test um, after we wrote the code. And so now let's um, do that. Excuse me. <clears throat> I think I get more thirsty when I talk a lot in the morning <laughs> or really early in the morning. <laughs> All right, so now we are gonna add a little bit of TDD um, to this code just to see, just to show um, the three steps of TDD in practice. So it's gonna be super simple. All right, so first thing that we do is we write a failing test. And so the question that is really important to ask um, to make this easier on ourselves is, what is the next simplest requirement that we wanna add? So we need to figure that out first. So I've decided I wanna um, just be able to pass in um, an array literal uh, to print tweets. So once I figure out that requirement, then I add that. So I, I go into the test, we're doing it test first, and I pass in um, the array literal. And then next thing you do is you make the test fail, right? So we run go test and we see that um, the compiler is telling us that there's too many arguments um, when we're calling print tweets in main. Um, so, this is good. This is the first step of TDD. So we're gonna go to the next slide. Now we are in the second step, um, which is to make the test pass. So we need to write enough code to satisfy only that super simple failing test. So to do this, it's really easy I've, um, to listen very carefully to the compiler because it'll tell us what to do next. So, um, in the previous slide, you see you see that um, the compiler was telling us that there were too many arguments in a call to print tweets. So what we need to do is um, we need to go to main.go and change our function uh, print tweets to accept an argument. So let's do that in here. So in here, um, we're letting it accept the argument and then that's all we're gonna do. Uh, so we're doing this in incremental steps, right? Uh, it's easy to move ahead because you know what's going to happen next. But with TDD, the discipline is to do it um, one step at a time. We're in very, very small step at a time. So we run go test and we see that the compiler is telling us um, a new a new problem, which is there's not enough arguments in the call to print tweets, which um, is over here. So. Let's try to make the test pass by listening to the compiler and passing in an array literal to print tweets. So we did that over here. We're passing in an array literal and I run the test again. And um, now the compiler is giving us um, a new, uh, now the test is really running. It's telling us that um, we're getting this, um, this uh, array, I've been calling it tweet, but this array, uh, but we want this. Um, so this is good, we're almost there. Let's see. Okay, so now we know what to do, right? We need to make sure um, we add a tweet variable into the return statement of print tweets. So what I mean by that is Let's see, okay. So over here, we weren't returning the tweet that we were passing into print tweets. So now we're gonna be returning that exactly. And now when we run go test, uh, we can see that it passes. Cool. So we made the test pass, hooray for us. 
All right, last step of TDD is to refactor. And all that means, as I mentioned before, is um, making the code look cleaner or help it perform um, better. So I did a very, very small refactor um, in both the main.go and main te underscore test.go files. I just made it look very um, much cleaner by passing in, um, by uh, packaging the array literal into a variable so that I can just reuse it. Um, and it just looks way cleaner. And I did the same for the other um, file. So package the array literal and a second tweet variable. So it looks cleaner. All right. So clearly um, these kinds of uh, refactors aren't, actually they are a big deal, but as I said, we're, we're doing the simplest route just to see um, to DT in action. All right, so now that was a very, just one small, very, very small feature that we did in TDD. And next thing you do is you repeat it for the next simplest uh, piece of code. So, um, for the next simplest piece of code, you just follow the same steps. You ask yourself, what is the the next tiny requirement? Um, maybe for me, it's uh, being able to uh, pass in an array from a dynamic array that always changes. Um, so next is next question you need to ask yourself is how do you satisfy the simple test that we made fail? And then last is what can I refactor to make the program better? All right, so that is TDD in action. I hope you all enjoyed that. I love this drawing that um, this girl made. I wish I knew her name, but I will link um, her webpage later. Okay, so now uh, these are my, um, my learning points. Uh, for learning TDD that I wanted to share with those who haven't done TDD before in Go. So first of all, it requires a lot of discipline to uh, do. Discipline and uh, because, so this is why it's really hard um, because there's a big work culture shift that you need to do, um, you need to make before you can go fast. Um, as I think Matt mentioned, yes, Matt. Um, and I, I say that it requires a lot of passion too, because I feel like I was really passionate about TDD because I wanted to elevate my engineering skills. Um, and this is one good way to do that. And next is that it takes a lot of practice. Um, but if you start with the basics like me, I think we all will do fine. And I think it is worth your time if you could go back to the slide deck that I have of the um, many benefits it gives us, um, it's worth your time if you have time to do it. As a developer advocate, um, sometimes I don't have that much time, but I still advocate for it and I do it um, when I can. And also lastly, there are so many resources online that you can look into, like so many. I love that there's so many people who advocate for it and there's a lot of different um, perspectives on, on questions that I have. So I think that it'll make it really much easier to overcome the learning curve. All right, so what is, oh, I went back. All right, so what's next for me? So I'm going to apply TDD to the rest of the magic and go guide uh, because uh, it'll be a lot of fun. And I also want to start um, doing TDD to, as a developer advocate, I sometimes contribute to our code base at Magic. So um, I feel like the best way to advocate for TDD is to uh, you know, do it yourself um, in your team and uh, just help others see how cool it is and beneficial it is. So that's after I do this part. And this is Hero, by the way, our logo. It's very, very, very cute. Okay, so yeah, and that is it for my talk. 
if you want to stay in touch, I am on Twitter and Instagram a lot of the times. Thank you.